All right, whenever I want to do something new, I go to YouTube. And let's take a look for setting up a new culture of springtails. There's a lot of great videos out there. And every single one of them says use charcoal. I hate charcoal. Absolutely hate it, but I'm going to follow some directions here. I've got my starter culture, and I'm going to set them up in this new culture. So let me dig in and start setting this up. Big lumpy pieces of charcoal. And already my hands are filthy. Now what do I do? Let's see if I can get this screen back. Now I've got my tablet all charcoaled up. A couple more pieces of charcoal. Add some water. Now I've got charcoal all over my faucet. This is just a mess. Okay, let me dump in some of these uh, springtails into the new culture. All right, I have my new culture of springtails here. It's all set, but I hate charcoal. There's got to be a better way. Let's take a look at a better way to do springtails without using charcoal. The Isopod Vlog. Okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this charcoal. And while we do that, I'm going to talk about why you should care about springtails. Springtails are a great addition to any bioactive terrarium or vivarium. They're a teeny tiny creature that some people, I've got a lot of questions about this, reptile keepers asking me if they have mites in their enclosure, and actually it's springtails. And they can tell springtails, but almost all springtails hop a little bit. But far more importantly, springtails take care of that debris in the enclosure. Anything that's molding, springtails attack it and eat it. Will they completely take care of any load in your enclosure? Well, it depends on the enclosure and how many animals you have in it, but most of the time they can take care of a good amount of the debris in your enclosure. They don't bite, they don't stink, they're just a great addition to any enclosure. Not only will they take care of any molding food in the enclosure, they'll take care of any dying or decaying food matter in the enclosure as well. Combine springtails with dwarf white isopods and you have a perfect, perfect cleanup crew. If you look in any well-established bioactive enclosure, you'll see a corner of the enclosure that has a ton of springtails in it. So what are the requirements? Dark, warm, moist areas. And we can accomplish that in a setup without the charcoal and without the water mess. Now I've kept springtails in the same setup that I just mentioned with the container water, charcoal, and that works great. And again, there's some great videos out there on this setup, and you can take a look at those. But a few years ago, I started keeping isopods, and I found a much, much, much easier way to keep springtails. And we're gonna look at that method right now. This is actually a container of ivory millipedes. Let's take a look at this container. Now, I just seeded off of this container to another enclosure probably about three or four days ago. It doesn't look like there's any springtails in here whatsoever, but if I pull up a couple of these pieces of wood, you're going to see a mass amount of springtails. Take a look at that. You can see the little ivory millipede in here. We should have some babies as well. And to answer your question, no, springtails do not in any way impact other animals. Let's take a look under this piece of wood right here. So what did I say earlier? They like it damp, warm, and moist. And this soil is certainly moist and damp under this piece of wood and certainly dark. These springtails in this enclosure are certainly thriving. Let's take another, let's take a look at another enclosure. This is actually my native isopod culture. 
and you can see it's set up with sphagnum moss and we're going to get back to that point in just a moment. Lots and lots of leaves, decaying leaves that they absolutely love and a big piece of cork bark here. Let me overturn this cork bark and see if there's any isopods in here. Let's zoom in just a bit here. And again, just a perfect setup for these uh, springtails. And I think the isopods love the enclosure as well. So let's talk about their enclosure again. Dark, warm, and moist. How do I accomplish the dark? Obviously with the cork bark. Because I keep these with isopods, I keep them a little bit cooler, but it's just warm enough for the, the springtails. And for moisture, sphagnum moss. Lots and lots and lots of sphagnum moss. And if you looked in this sphagnum moss, these springtails are all over the place. The sphagnum moss keeps the substrate moist, and that's really all that they need. Let's talk about foods for just a moment. Again, these isopods are all over the place with moldy food or decaying food. That's decaying wood, decaying leaves, anything decaying. But I like to supplement their food with other foods as well. And that includes zucchini or potatoes or any kind of a, a uh, firmer vegetable. I also like to feed dry foods Specifically, the Supreme Isopod Shell. They just absolutely love this. And one of the benefits of the Supreme Isopod Shell is that it contains spirulina. And they love, love algae. So one question you have is, how do I harvest these springtails? Well, it's really, really super easy. Grab a deli cup, a higher deli cup, a little bit of height on it, because these, do, these springtails do jump. Take the wood and then just click it on the side of the deli cup. It's that easy. The springtails will fall into the deli cup and then you can use those springtails to either seed another enclosure, bioactive enclosure, or one really, really important fact that I haven't shared yet. We have a lot of very, very tiny geckos, very super tiny geckos, and we use springtails as a food source, invaluable food source. So I like to feed fruit flies and mini mealworms to our very, very small micro gecko babies, but these springtails are invaluable. Here's your challenge. Go out to YouTube, go out to Facebook, go out to the web, and find another source that talks about springtails that doesn't talk about this water and charcoal method of keeping them. Let me know if you can find any. I really, really feel this is so much easier than dealing with charcoal, and it keeps your hands clean. I hope this was a helpful video. If you liked it, hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the notification all. I hope you enjoyed watching this Isopide fans and Gecko fans. We'll see you next week.